Um, now, you um, you first got elected just a couple of years ago. What made you decide to run for office? Because you're you're about my age, so this is a pretty early start for somebody. Yeah, I was 26 when I first ran, and uh, I feel like I'm getting old. I'm 32 now. Oh, ancient. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, I ran because I worry about the direction of the country, you know. And, and I think Florida has an opportunity. We're such a big state. We matter in a presidential election that we have the opportunity to be an example to the rest of the country. And we can show what conservative government really looks like. And I think Governor Scott is doing a great job of that. And he and I are partnering and taking Florida to a place that hopefully will be viewed as the example to the rest of the country and hopefully the world about when you really, really dig into what conservatism mean, means and what freedom means and what free markets mean and what liberty means. If you really embrace those things, you can create a dynamic economy and a dynamic state. And Florida has a chance to do that. And hopefully we can be successful in our, in our uh, efforts. Um, I know that one of your pet issues is um, improving our education system. Um, what do you think are some of the um, ways that we can we can help continue to improve Florida schools? Well, when Governor Bush came in in 1998, our education system was at the very bottom. It was just awful. It was an embarrassment. Uh, he spent almost his entire eight years focusing on creating a great education system. And so what we've seen since then is tremendous gains. I mean, we have been, uh, created accountability in forms of measurement and choice. We're empowering parents. We allow them to have choices on where the kids want to go. We have accountability in whether or not a student is doing well or a classroom is doing well. So we just have uh, made dramatic changes, and we're seeing the improvements because of that. I think it's ready to take, I'm ready to take it to the next level. I think technology is allowing us to have uh, what I call a student-centered education, where you can focus on the individual student. So I think what you'll see in the, in going forward is more empowerment of the parents, more technology, more choice, more accountability, and making sure that we create the best education system that the country can offer. And if we do that, that will, in, 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 in essence, long term, create a better economy. So you're talking about school choice in the sense of not just different types of schools, public, private, charter, but even maybe different um, structures within the school and different classroom setups. I mean, is that, is that what you're talking about? Here's what about? I'm saying. Giving, giving the parents, every student learns differently. And so there used to be this thought 100 years ago, and even really 10 years ago, you stick someone in a classroom, you make them read something, and you hope that they learn it. And the teacher tries to explain it from the front. That is an old system that's outdated. We have a very, we know that people learn differently. And so making sure that we create a system that asks what the student wants first, and then tries to fill it, that's the future. And the idea that because your zip code is 33543, that your child is destined to go to a specific school, that's ridiculous. And we now have to break down those barriers and allow parents to really be empowered to send their kids to the best school that is available. Okay, great. Um, getting on the topic of property insurance, what do you think um, we need to do with uh, citizens' property insurance? Well, we've done a lot already. Uh, we have $6 billion in reserves, so frankly, if we get hit by a medium-sized storm, we hope we don't, but if we do, we have some reserves to cover that. But long-term, the state of Florida has hundreds of billions of dollars. I'm going to say that again, hundreds of billions of dollars. It, that is out that there risk, yeah. that we are at risk for. We have that much exposure. And so we've got to make sure, we've got to get the citizens to be smaller. There's a million and a half people on citizens' policies. We've got to get that number dramatically lower. We need to get more private sector dollars in here. And there's a way to do it, and there's a way to do it responsibly without rates going through the roof. Um, but to me, it is, a, uh, it is an atrocity that we've allowed the state to have this exposure and have this much danger and not address it yet. Governor Scott and I talked a lot about it. We both think that we have to address it, and I think you'll see next sessions and efforts to do that. Okay, well, as a Floridian, I'm really glad to hear you say that. I do hope that that's a priority for the next session. Um, is there anything else that is in your head that you are hoping that is a priority for the legislature this next session? I mean, my big priority, it's, it may sound general, and it may sound um, overly simplistic, but it's that everything we do, from our education system, to our health care system, to our criminal justice system, to our economic development investments, everything we do, should be geared around creating the best place in America and hopefully the world to do business. If that is our number one focus, we will create jobs, we will have smarter people, we will have less poverty, we will have less crime. And we can show that true Republican conservative principles actually can do great things. And I want that to, that's what I want for Florida to be, is to be that example. I think it's achievable, and I think if we keep our eye on that prize, we'll see it happen. Well, yeah, the uh, unemployment statistics are starting to show that the States have elected Republican governors the last time around have a much better unemployment rate, so hopefully we'll continue that. Um, is there anything else that you'd like people to know that um, I've got good viewers around Florida? Is there anything else that you'd like to tell them that you can get involved in or anything they should look out for in the next year? Just that this is a year that it's all on the line. You know, um, We know what four-year warriors of Obama will look like. 
it would be almost, uh, it would be hard to imagine a recovery from that. Eight years of Obama and his presidency uh, would really set this country back a long time. Uh, we have an opportunity. We have a defining moment in this country. I tell somebody that when there's a defining moment, you define the moment or the moment defines you. And when we go to the convention in Tampa, not too far from where we're standing right now, we, that is the defining moment for this party and for the country. And if Mitt Romney can seize that moment, and if we can support him in doing so, we can change the trajectory of America. And that's something to get excited about. Okay, great. Well, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you spending the time with me. So thank you. Thank you.